welcome to our series on Let's Talk About. And today I want to talk about an amazing comeback that we all can have. Now you might think it's strange for me going back into the Old Testament to explain the heart of the New Testament. That is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ and the new life that he brings to all those who come to faith in him. But this really shouldn't be surprising because it was the Old Testament that the apostles used to explain this good news at the very beginning of the first church. And it was through the working and the power of the Holy Spirit through, which, through the church that this message reached every corner of the known world within a single generation. The Apostle Paul tells us that these scriptures were written for our instructions so that we can stand and not fall. He does so in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. He said, Now all these things happened to them as examples. And they were written for our admonition, upon whom the end of the ages have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stand take heed, lest he fall. Now, this is seen in our text from the prophet Jeremiah. It's a great example and illustration of the good news from a prophet whose name was more synonymous with, with judgment than with hope. Yet here is a message of hope and the very essence of the good news. And so I'm reading today from Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 18 and 19. Verses 18 said, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I'll bring back the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be built upon its own mound, and the palace shall remain according to its own plan. And then in verse 19, he goes on to say, Then out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of those who make merry. I'll multiply them, and they shall not diminish. I'll also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Notice how it began and how it begins. It says, thus says the Lord. In other words, this is God's word to us. But the question is this, is are we listening? And are we understanding? Because when we do, then we'll plan our lives in accordance with what God is saying instead of planning our lives according to our own thoughts, ideas, and imaginations. Jesus says the same thing to the church. He said that those who have ears to hear, hear what the Holy Spirit is speaking to the church. I believe that if we truly hear and listen to understand, then we will act upon the truth of God and His Word. Now what the Lord is saying here through Jeremiah is that upon the old, that is upon the ruined past, He is going to restore it. That is, He'll renew what was destroyed. Israel will return from its captivity and Jerusalem will be rebuilt from out of its ruins. The wording actually better reads this way, built upon its ruins or upon its mounds in the Hebrew language. In those days, cities were built and rebuilt upon themselves. In Israel today, you find all these archaeological digs or excavations that were known as tells. Well, in the Hebrew language, this word tells is our word for mounds. These are cities that continually rebuilt themselves upon the debris and ruins of their past. And so the Lord says that he is going to restore. And yet even more than that, he wants to restore. He was going to make it new. You see, that is what Jesus does in our lives. He builds a new life from out of its ruined past. He doesn't remove that life from its past, but allows that life to be renewed and completely changes it. From its past. And the reason it is built upon its past is this, is so that from its ruins we may never forget what had happened to us. We can never forget what brought it to ruins in the first place. Notice God never changed where Jerusalem sat. He didn't tell them to go a couple miles down the road, you know, and start in a place where there was no past. Instead, he commanded that Jerusalem be restored and rebuilt from its ruins, from the stones and materials that had been torn down by the enemy. Jerusalem was the prize. It was the jewel of the nation of Israel. And it had a commanding presence with its walls, towers, buildings, and God's holy temple. It was a city that could not easily be conquered. And yet the sin of the people, their own willful disobedience and neglect of God's commandments had left the city and its defenses weakened to the point where at last the enemy was able to attack and break through, leaving behind a ruined city, broken down walls, and a sacked and destroyed temple. All that the Jews had boasted in for all these centuries 
was now no more than a massive mess. Its glory departed. Its greatness was gone. This is a perfect picture of a person's soul. In the beginning, God made humanity perfect, creating them in the image and likeness of himself. He also gave humanity rule over this earth. And so like Jerusalem and the temple, humanity was to stand out above all that God had created, the rest of God's creation. Further, God had endowed us with great power and faculties. But like the children of Israel, Adam and Eve lacked their defenses and allowed the enemy to enter. And the fall of humanity from its great height was the end result of this, leaving humanity's soul and spirit in ruins. But here's the good news. The good news is that God had already put into place Jerusalem's renewal. That upon its ruined past, he wanted to rebuild his city and temple. In the same way, God put into place our renewal. And upon our ruined past, he wants to rebuild our soul and spirit. The soul of humanity has fallen right now and is in a ruined state. But as Jeremiah had prophesied, God wants to restore us. He wants to bring us back from our captivity to sin and death and rebuild his city and temple in our lives. How can such a rebuilding happen? Well, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come into him and dine with him and he with me. Jesus is standing outside the, the door of our hearts and of his church, knocking, asking to be let in. And that's because he wants to do miracles. He wants to do the impossible in our lives. He wants to rebuild what we've allowed Satan to destroy. He also wants to come and speak into our deepest need and even in our most troubling need. He comes to us when we are helpless and are, and are at our most vulnerable and miserable state <laughs> and announces this. He announces his plans to rebuild and restore the Jerusalem of our souls and the temple of our spirit. What a promise. But to do so, he needs to bring us back then to have the rubbish and the ruins of our past cleared away through confession and repentance. And then upon this site, this ruined site, what he wants to do is he wants to uh, bring up and rebuild a new city and a new temple. In the end, what clears away our ruined past so that God can rebuild within us a new soul and spirit is nothing less than Jesus Christ and the death he died for us upon the cross. For upon the cross he bore our sins and died in our place so that we can be made new and renewed. Upon that cross he cleared away the rubbish and ruins of our sins and disobedience. And so just as God pronounced and promised a new Jerusalem upon the side of its ruined past. So God will make all who come to him through his son Jesus Christ a brand new creation where the old has passed away and behold all things become new. This is God's promise. And it's a promise that he gives to each and every one of us. God wants to give us all a new beginning. He wants to give us all an amazing comeback. And so my hope and my, my prayer and hope is that you all have this amazing comeback in your life, no matter where you are. You may have known the Lord for years, but unfortunately, through the situation, maybe back from 2020 and all the stuff that's been going on or through back in your past, maybe you've allowed your defenses to lax and the enemy has come on in and he's scattered, he is ruined. But God's promise is this, that he wants to renew he wants to renew his temple within you. And he will do this from your past ruins and he'll make them new. So give it over to the Lord God and allow Jesus to come in and make that promise a reality in your life. May God bless you and keep you. May he turn his face upon you and may he give you new life and peace. Take care and God bless you.